Who the hell? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh no, honey, it wasn't your fault. It was mine. If anyone. Uh, yes, yes, this is an emergency. We need an ambulance right away. A young woman has fallen off of a ladder, and we are at 724 Foster Avenue, the second floor studio. Hey, Lisa, you in there? Come on, baby, open up. I know you are. Open up. Morning. Bobby, what on earth are you doing here? I got a better question. What are you doing here in Doc Hall's apartment? Tina, I'm telling you, you are out of your mind. Right. Yeah, this comes from the woman with a one-way ticket to the Mountain View Sanitarium. You'll never believe it. Well, hello again. Tina, you said you had something to tell me? Here. Well, it was too hard to figure out. I heard you working a different shift at the hospital, and Bev said that you found a place to stay. So okay, okay, you okay. Get... You're brilliant. And you just can't stay away from me, right? I never could. Mm. So how you like staying at Doc Hall's apartment? <laughs> well, can't beat the rent. <laughs> and I sure have a ball messing with him. He always has his alarm clock set for 8.30, so I said it's a 9.30. Put a dead bulb in his reading lamp, and he's gonna wonder if he doesn't have a mouse in his refrigerator. Yeah, you just be cool before he finds out what's going on. Oh, I I'm only doing enough to mess with his mind. Huh? Now for you. Why are you here? See you, sweet thing. What else? Bobby, if you're looking for a place to hide out, No, no, it. no. A friend of mine finally came through for me. I got my own couch to myself, thank you. But I'm still hurting for some cash. Like I told you, I can't help you with that. Hey, yo, did I ask you? Well, then. If you're here for romance, that's out, too. You see, you must think I don't listen too good. I heard all this before, right? Then why are you here? I need a favor. Uh-oh. It's a real easy favor, too. Morning, Nurse Ferrantelli. Mr. Bradwell. Do you the culture report for Dr. Sorensen? Yes, I already sent it up to him. What are you working on now? Just weighing some bits of metal for future reference. Why did you hide your notebook under some papers when I came in? I beg your pardon. You heard me. Is this an interrogation? No, it's a simple question. One that I feel that I obviously do not have to answer. Oh, in other words, what you're doing really has nothing to do with hospital lab work. Not for intelligence. Have I ever been derelict in my duties? Have I ever shunned my responsibilities? That's not the point. It is most exactly the point. Landview Hospital is paying you to do the work the doctors find necessary, not to pursue your own research. Nurse Farantelli, you're very insecure, aren't you? A nurse promoted to lab overseer who obviously feels threatened by her subordinates. That's ridiculous. I have no problems with anyone but you. So, now we have narrowed the crux of your problem down to me. A brilliant research scientist of whom you are obviously envious, isn't that it? I'm only interested in the welfare of the hospital patients. And I am interested in the welfare of all mankind, which obviously includes the patients at this hospital. So as long as I do not shun my duties here, mankind will benefit from that research. And as long as that research is not impeded by such bourgeois pity, jealousy as yours! You have a very inflated opinion of yourself, Mr. Bradwell. If you're the wonderfully creative scientist you claim, why are you working here in the first place, doing such lowly hospital work, hmm? A question I ask myself 25 times a day, and the answer is quite simply, economics. In order to save money, you're using hospital supplies and equipment to do your own research, aren't you? If you continue, I will take this up with the administration, and that, I assure you, Mr. Bradwell, will be the end of your research. Mr. 
Tina, what was it you wanted to talk to Flint about? Well, uh, I think it's time that we got everything out in the open, that the three of us talk about the fact that Clint and I made love. Tina, I was on my way to work. I don't think this is really the time to... Vicky uh... and I were already discussing it. Furthermore, we did not make love. Because as you know, I happen to love my wife. Oh, is that what you told her, how huh? that nothing happened? I was referring mainly to your terminology. And since I was so drunk that I blacked out, as far as I know, nothing did happen. <laughs> that is some rationalization, and you're actually buying that? Well, I do feel partially responsible for what happened between you two. As you know, Clint and I have not had a physical relationship for some time. Of course, you've been coming on to him for weeks. Vicky, <laughs> Why would you bother to deny it now after it's all done? Come on, you accomplished your goal. You slept with my husband. Your husband? That's right. Wait, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't a wife supposed to sleep with her husband? Now, you hold on just a minute. I'm sorry, darling. Tina and I are having real problems again. Of course, it is... Mostly my fault to think that I trusted her after everything. Oh, well, that's great, that's great. Clint had nothing to do with this, huh? I'm the only villain here? The fact of the matter is, we are both at fault. But I have a feeling that Vicky is willing to give us both another chance. No. No, I'm not willing to give Tina another chance. My own sister seducing my husband. You were drunk, and so I suppose that's some sort of excuse. But what is your excuse? Only that you are an oversexed little girl with the values of a gnat. Right. And your values are so sterling, aren't they, Vicky? Look, <clears throat> ladies, I, I really do have to uh, get to the office. Clint, I think uh, Vicky would prefer I, uh, I left the house. Yes. Uh, I think she's right. What about you, Clint? Would you like me to leave, too? Well, as a matter of fact, Tina, I, uh, I agree. Vicky and I have got our work cut out for us to rebuild our marriage. And with you being around, it'll just complicate things. I'm sorry if that hurts you, but that's the way it is. And possibly, eventually, with some space and some time between us, we can find our way back to some sort of relationship. Yeah, that is unless something comes up that prevents that. Darling, would you mind bringing home the classified ad advances so Tina can look for an apartment? I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Are you going to be home on time? Well, you know the banner's still humming along, despite its being up for sale. And yes, I will, uh, I'll see you later. Bye, Tina. Drive carefully, darling. Uh... Lost your nerve, didn't you? No. No, I just decided there was no sense in fighting a war without the proper ammunition. Oh, but don't worry, Nikki. The war will start. <laughs>